The munitions used by the rebels came up from Namu to Dougley Pass. The revolt was quelled, but at the cost of 90 lives. 60 natives and 30 of our own lancers. 90 dead men. And why are they dead? They are dead because the lancers guarding Dougley Pass, the sole gate to an attack on Jerish Tobi, were ordered elsewhere by Colonel Loring Lee. I will call Captain Loveland. Raise your right hand. Repeat the oath. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence which I shall give before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Captain Loveland, will you tell the court about any orders received by you from Colonel Lee on the night of the 18th? I received written orders, delivered to me shortly after 9 o'clock, to proceed immediately with my detachment to Tablis. Orders in Colonel Lee's writing. Can you identify the writing? Yes, it was his writing, but perhaps... Perhaps what? I was about to say the order may not have been as neatly written as usual. Of course, this might have been due to haste. Could it have been due to intoxication? I cannot judge as to that. That is all. I believe you have known Colonel Lee for several years. Have you ever seen him intoxicated? Not intoxicated. Have you ever known him to issue a careless order? I have not. Captain Loveland, in view of all the very strange things which happened that night, has it ever occurred to you that the order in question might have been forged? The question is disallowed. Unless you intend to offer proof. Yes, that will be all. I call Colonel Loring Lee to the stand. came to your dig. Thought it might be important. Sir. Well, we're okay. Thank you, sir. fundamental than that referred to by the opposing counsel. As he has so aptly stated, under ordinary circumstances, there might be doubt as to the validity of a claim against the defendant company. However, in this instance, my clients have suffered a loss which can be laid directly at the door of the defendants. I have no Anything doubt wrong, that the learned counsel's opinions have been honestly expressed. But I have... May it please your lordship, I'm called from the court on urgent private affairs. By your lordship's permission? Certainly. Thank you. That's his flying officer Lee. That's his ship coming in now. You are late. Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but it's such a lovely ship, I hated to come down at all. How very flattering. But now I'm here, I'm awfully glad to see you. And did I ever tell you, your eyes are mysterious... Pools of limpid twilight. Heavens, is it Wednesday today? Oh, did you know each Miss... Uh, miss Cable for up? Oh, thank you, most timely. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take you both out to tea, and I'll tell you all sorts of classic things that I thought up in the air, all right? Yes, excuse me, darling. Darlings. Christopher, what is it? 
I'm sorry, I've got to go. You again, Lynn. <laughs> Look here, you dumbbell. I might have shot you. Ah, oh, divine to be killed with such loved hands. The faithful attaché, decoding messages of an empire on which the sun never sets. What does that say? Sorry. Why, you know, those messages might shake the world. Oh, it's so romantic. <laughs> it's about as romantic as reading the last census reports. My, how you shatter my illusions. And one illusion was that you might have thought enough of me to come down to that tea fight. Oh, heavens, is it as late as that? I am mm -hmm. sorry, Lynn. Well, you ought to be. We'd better go down now. No, you don't. I'm taking you out tonight. Those are orders from your boss. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, Lynn. More work tonight. Oh, no, you're not going to work anymore tonight. We're going out. We're going slumming, dancing. We're going to drink champagne and listen to Negro orchestras. Oh, that's good medicine for your correct English soul, my son. Woman's oldest instinct, eh? <laughs> Want to make me over? And how you need it. Come on, let's go. Now, look, I'll join you in the hall in uh, two minutes. I must finish this work. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll stay and help you, and then you can finish it that much quicker, huh? Come help on. Help me. Now, this is one thing, Lynn, that you cannot interfere in. Oh, I see. Secrets of the Empire, huh? Yes. All right, but don't you keep me waiting. I won't. Two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, what's that? A cablegram for you, sir. Personal. Thank you. That'll be all, Benson. Yes, sir. Gad, what a homecoming. A lifetime of distinguished service and chucked out like this. Never did a dishonorable thing in his life. Must you do that? I've got to do something. The trouble is, I've read the proceedings of the trial, and I don't see how they could have reached any other verdict. What's that? Do you mean to say you actually believe the governor guilty? Don't be an ass. Now, look here, Nosey, I... I've known Dad a good many more years than you have. What do you think I believe? Well, what are you all being so solemn about? It's like a funeral. What I'd like to do is to find out who's behind all this and wring his blasted neck. Oh, Chuck the heroics, kid. We all know there's something funny about this. Quite. That's why the old man asked us to meet him here. Now, look here. We've all got to appear as though nothing had happened, as though this is a perfectly natural homecoming. Do you remember how I used to come home on leave? Full of beans, all sorts of plans. Mm. Yes, you know how he'll take this, don't you? You bet. Head up and smiling. Here he comes. Yes, that sounds like the governor. Mandis. Mandis, the colonel's here. Colonel. Hello, Mandis. Back again, huh? Welcome home, sir. Thank you. Your case, sir. No, I'll keep that myself. <laughs> A bit of weather, sir. A trifle cold, perhaps. Drivel damp, too, Amanda. Eh? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wyatt and the others are in the library. Right. Uh, Hello, boys. Good of you to come. Oh, here, Governor. Hello, Father. Ah, oh, Dad. Welcome home, Hello, Dad. Sir. Let's have a look at you. 
One, two, number one. Me, no, sir. Boson, sir. Losey, sir. Rodney, sir. Huh? I didn't quite get that last one. Oh, all right then, Snigglefritz. But I think it's a rotten name, sir. Well, you chose it yourself. Remember, you were going to be a magician. Snigglefritz the Great. <laughs> oh, a lucky day for me, sir. Dave, me! You know, what happened to the big oak by the gate? Why, uh, I had to have it cut down, sir. It died. Pity. One hates to see staunch old friends go down. Glad to see you looking so fit, Governor. You're taking it well, boys. I knew you would. There's nothing to take, sir. We knew there was something sticky about it. There was. We all read the evidence. What about that Batman of yours, Mulcahy? I'd as soon distrust one of you. And Captain Loveland? So far as I know, an officer doing his duty. Drake, sir? One of the best. He's got special leave to come home and help me. You're in the fight, of course. Naturally. Good. We knew you wouldn't take this lying down, sir. And neither will we. We're in this with you, if we can help. You bet we are. We've always stuck together, all of us, through fire, flood, and famine. Famine, Snicklefritz? When was that? Well, the time that Nosey and I got lost in the woods and missed supper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, sir. You must be feeling tired. I am a bit tired. The nights on the boat were the worst when I knew how all you fellows must be feeling. <sighs> well, I, I think we'll all have a spot. It's a sound idea. Now, have you any idea... Oh, uh... Have you any idea, sir, of the motive behind all this? I have. A very definite idea. It was the work of the munition syndicate. <whistles> the tribe that revolted had the very latest in modern guns. Do you mean to say, sir, that someone sold guns to the natives and then created an opportunity for the guns to be used? I do. It all fits in. Oh, that's, that's absolutely fictional. Have you any proof? I have. It wasn't easy to collect. After the court-martial, everybody seemed to disappear. Disappear? Well, scatter. General Brace was transferred to Egypt. Captain Loveland inherited a fortune and retired to Buenos Aires. And the barman had already done a bug? Yes. Well, that's extraordinary. Ah, just to see whether you really can take it, sir. I can, if it isn't drugged. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, here's confusion to your enemies and to ours. And your mother, boys. I'm glad she's not here today. Well, I've got an hour's work to do, so we'll clear out for a bit, will you? See you at dinner, sir. Dinner, Father. See you at dinner, Governor. See you at dinner, Dan. After dinner, I'll lay the case before you and ask your advice. Four brains are better than one. Yes, sir. Four brains? What about me? Oh, have you found one? Good. I hadn't heard. <laughs> no, no Manders, will you see if the Colonel is ready for us? Very good, sir. It's good port, this. I don't imagine you get very good port in America. Oh, yes, you do. How do you get it? Well, they send it over in boats. Oh. Oh, boats. No, see. Are you growing a moustache? I beg your pardon, it's grown. It jolly well isn't. Jeff, do you realize that while you've been away, you've picked up the most appalling American accent? Have I? Do you know, in the States, nearly everybody takes me for a Yankee. Yes, I can well understand that. Well, uh, let me hear you say, OK, toots. Tell my sons I'm ready for them, Mandos. Very good, sir. Who's that? Your father is ready, Mr. Wyatt. Oh, thanks. 
Now for the story. Come on, you chaps. What was that? Sounded like a gun. It's locked. So, Father! Father! You try this again. Oh, Dad! Dad! Killed himself. The disgrace and madness. That isn't true. I I won't believe it. Bino, look. His badge case. It's empty. His paper's gone. Dead evidence. Look, the window. Somebody came through this way, all right. This is murder. What's the plan, Bino? You're head of the family now. Well, we've got four names to work on. There's Drake, Mulcahy, that barman, and Loveland. These men must be found and talked to. Right. I shall go to India and start with Mulcahy. Drake's coming here. Boson, you better wait for him. Right. Loveland's in Buenos Aires. Nosey, that's your job. Good. Well, what about me? I'm in on this. You're going back to Oxford. Oh, no. You'll I... do as you're told. Oh, but that isn't fair. This this is a family cause. It's Dad's and ours. Well, Boson, you understand. This is my cause, too. He's right, Bino. Yeah, let him go. All right. Rodney goes with me. Thanks, Bino. But this isn't going to be any tea party. If Dad's evidence was so important that they had to murder him, we'll be running the same risk. Let it come. And the sooner the better. Yes, to you, Mother. And to you, Dad. Mother, Dad. Hello. Doesn't the diplomatic corps even allow you to look surprised? I'm not. You're not? You're the world's champion, Popper Upper. It amounts to genius. <laughs> Your butler thought I was working my way through college and wouldn't let me in. Mm, sensible fellow. <laughs> What's the matter with your feet? You're not starting a nudist pose. No. Feet hurt. There wasn't a taxi, and I had to walk all the way from that adorable little place called uh, St. John Comley. St. John Comley. And, yeah, and the man said that... Why? Hmm? St. John Comley. Well, that's the way it always has been. Oh. Well, however, the man said it would only be just a step. I suppose that's the well-known English sense of humor, huh? The uh, village has never seen a taxi. Oh, really? Well, now that you're here, shall I carry you across the threshold like a bride? Oh, Jeff, I'd love it. Oh, Lena. I think you... I think you'd better walk. <laughs> Scaredy cat. You're never going to get any place. You're always going to be a... <laughs> you see, I got in, Meadows. Menders. I beg your pardon. I say that's pretty close. How did you know? Oh, Meadows, Menders. It's all right, American, you know. Oh, yes. Tea in the library. Very good, sir. Madam, uh, may uh, I your rest? It's a dress. Oh, yes. Oh, Jeff, it's love. Oh, it looks just like the tap room of the Staten Hotel at Buffalo. Thanks. Well, you needn't be so snooty about it. It's a very nice tap room. Oh, and so is this. <sighs> fire, it's cozy. I love fires. Well, it's nice to see you, Lynn, but what are you doing here? I came to find out why you stood me up that night in Washington and then disappeared. No, thank you. The embassy wouldn't tell me a thing, and so I started on a world tour looking for you. I happened to land in England first and heard you were here, so I came. Do I hear an apology for that stand-up? Jeff, what is it? It's in all the papers, Lynn. Two seconds after you left me that night, 
I had a cablegram say that my father had been court-martialed and broken in India. He asked me to meet him here. Oh. Was that, that English colonel your father? Yes. Oh. Well, I came barging in here like a... Oh, Jeff, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Oh, it's all right, Lynn. I, I realize you didn't know. Of course, I, I read all about it in the paper, but I never dreamed... London is calling, sir. Captain Drake. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, Lynn. Good afternoon, Captain Drake. This is Geoffrey Lee. We've been waiting to hear from you, sir. I'm so glad you got here. I've seen the papers about your father's death, Lee. Do you think it was suicide? No, we don't. We think it was murder. So do I. I'm coming out to see you immediately. No, don't send a car to the station for me. I'll manage. We must be very careful. I've been followed ever since I landed. Goodbye. That was a friend of the governor's. He's just come over here to help him clear himself. But your father was killed. Why? I know. That's what we've got to find out if it takes the rest of our lives. We've got four names to work on. There's Trooper Mulcahy and a barman in India. Mm -hmm. There's Douglas Loveland, Douglas uh, a retired army officer now living in Buenos Aires, and Captain Drake. Jeffrey, I, uh... Now, be a good kid, will you? I've got loads of work to do before Captain Drake arrives. There's a train leaving St. Jim Cumbria at 318. I'll have them take you down there in the car. Oh, but must I go now? I could be a lot of help to you. Now, look, it's sweet of you, and you're a charming girl, and I'm delighted to see you, but I don't need any help, and I really am busy. But I have something to tell you that's very important, Jeffrey, and you... Tea and I haven't had mine yet. Well, Manners, will you have to overtake this young lady down to the station in my car? Very good, okay, sir. I'll take these things. Oh, sorry, miss, but we haven't any chewing gum. Oh, that's quite all right, I... Hurry up, we're late. Now, oh, Geoffrey, what I had to tell you was really very important, and... Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll be in town tomorrow. Tell me at lunch. At lunch tomorrow? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm staying at the Savoy. Savoy, grill room, one o'clock. All right. And Geoffrey. Mm -hmm. Don't disappoint me. I won't. Goodbye. Goodbye. Where can I find a taxi? Damn hell. That's why you have me, sir. Taxi cab, sir? Why, there's one now. Hey. Yes, the hall, please. Yes, sir. Well, where'd that come from? A taxi. Here. Manders? Yes, sir. Have dinner served as soon as Captain Drake turns up, will you? Very good, sir. A car is coming now, sir. Oh, good. The car is there, sir, but uh, there's something strange. Driver. Yeah. Captain Drake. Well, you're looking very well this morning, my friend. I suppose he'll notice. No, oh, I guess you're right. He probably won't. Well, you can't blame a girl for trying anyway, can you? It's just come. Probably bad news. Something wrong? Decidedly wrong. I'm stood up again. You know, Piper, people are going to decide one of three things about me. Hello, give me the travel desk, please. Either that I'm a brazen hussy, or I'm just a plain squaw who has to tag along after a man no matter where he goes. Even if he isn't her man yet. Or that I'm unselfish enough to want to help a friend who's in a lot of trouble. Perhaps the correct answer is I'm all three of those things, huh? Say, Piper, what are you doing? Packing for Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires? Isn't that our next stop? Yes. Yeah, but how did you know? I'm psychic. Hello, is this the travel desk? 
Can you tell me, please, what boat left for Buenos Aires this morning and when will it arrive there? And can I beat that boat by sailing for New York immediately and then flying south? And if so, by how many days can I beat it? No, no, no. Call me back, will you, please? Yeah, thanks. Now, look here, Malkay. There's something I want to ask you. Did you know the barman that mixed that drink for my father at the club? I did. But there's a brown colleen here by the name of Aunt Annie. Annie. They say she knows him better. The barman? Does this girl Annie know where he went? She did spit it out once in the state of her wrath. Was in uh, America. South America, I think. South America? Did she say what part of South America? No, she did so. I'm just remembering. Let's see, now, I have a, I have a sister in, uh, in Cincinnati, in Ohio, married to a plumber, yes, nice girl. No, it wasn't there, it was in Ireland, I think. Anyway! English dog, you push me! English dog! English to me! English! Oh, Blimey! Help! Feedy! Yo! Me down! Any news of Beano and Rodney? Yes, a wire. They've struck the scent and the kid's been in a fight. Oh, trust no comments for that. What about you? I'm with love. And this calls for drink. Two B&B, please. I have met the most attractive. The most beautiful, the most wonderful girl. No, seriously, this time I struck ten. I think I'll marry her. <laughs> How do you do? What about the others? Well, it is hard on Joan, and I did have a kind of understanding with Betty, but... I think I'll keep this one. <laughs> now, Chris. We're out here on serious business. We've got to clear our father's name. Hold your hat on, Bosun. Everything's under control. This girl introduced me to the whole bunch, and you're going to meet them all in a minute. There's something going on, my boy. What? Excuse us, please. Well, what's going on? Well, I don't know yet, but here's the picture. Fernoy, American, rich with a yacht, but not cruising about just for pleasure. I'll stake my life on that. Then there's a General Tories who simply reeks of conspiracy, Anne Loveland. Very thick with them all and suddenly rolling in money. It looks like something pretty hot to me. Well, let's get on with it. Wait a minute. Your name's Gordon. Uh, Herkimer, Gordon. Uh, Herkimer? Why not Hezekiah? Well, I'm sorry if you prefer it like that, but you're already heavily billed as Herkimer. Mm. Captain Loveland, may I introduce my brother, Herkimer? He's just landed from England. How do you do? It's a pleasure, Mr. Gordon. Won't you join us? Delighted. Well, thank you very much. General Torres? How do you do? Signora Ahila? Mr. Do? Fenoy. How do you do, Mr. Gordon? And Miss Cherrington. How do you do, Mr. Gordon? Uh, uh, won't you sit down? How do you do, Miss Cherrington? <laughs> What is your politics? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, 
I, uh, I'd like to dance. You understand, don't you? You did look surprised. How in the world did you get here? By plane from New York. Why? Why not? After all, I'm the traveling kid, remember me? And besides, I adore intrigue. Give me a couple of aliases and a plate of fudge and I'm happy. I might have known you'd be here. Well, you'll change your tune when you find out how much help I can be. You see, I know Douglas Loveland. That's what I was trying to tell you that day at St. Jim Cumley. Now, Lynn, I'm delighted to see you and I know Hi. your intentions are excellent, but please keep out of this. What? Well, why, well, you ungrateful pup. I know, a little Miss Fixie. Mm -hmm. We're going to fix a speeding ticket for me in Washington. Took the whole embassy to get me out of the, um... Jug. Well, in that case, I don't suppose you'd care to go up the river on a little uh, yachting trip tomorrow with Fernoy, General Torres, and Loveland. But I would. Well, of course, I could fix it for you, Jeffrey, but if you think I'm such a nuisance... Look here, Lynn, we must go with them. Well, are you grateful? Rather. Say it properly, then. Jeffrey, Boston, Herkimer, Herky, listen. Loveland's going up the river on a yacht and... Are you two kissing, then? No. Here we have the village bears. I don't like to have Rodney running about alone in the native quarter. I wouldn't trouble about him, shoot him. Box better than I can myself. Rodney, you fools! Rodney! Rodney! What's up? This is the barman's girl. The barman at the club, you know. She was just showing me how she'd like to welcome home her airing night when the pup gun went off. Give me a look at the cannon. I wish you wouldn't go barging off all alone like this. We've got serious work to do. Good afternoon. I know that as well as you do. Oh, don't flutter like an old hen, Bino. I can dig my own worms and make a note of that, too. What's with the holy location? Come. It is the same lethal weapon was in the hand of the natives that revolted against us. Look, sir. The maker's name chiseled off and all. That's splendid. Now, can you tell me where you got that? One day, I steal from him. He drunk bad to Arnie when he drunk. Where did your friend live before he came here? I do not understand. It is strange how a little silver increases the understanding. Oh, yes, of course. Here, perhaps this will help clear the old bean. He say, Muros Island. Muros Island? In South America. We've got it, Bino. We'd better keep the gun for evidence. Yes. Here, Arnie, take this, but don't spend it all in one place. Calcutta? Calcutta? I have ticket. Ready? Mr. Wyatt Lee calling Mr. Herkimer Gordon. Hotel Royal, Buenos Aires. This is Calcutta Central, 0021. Buenos Aires, I have a ticket. Senor Herkimer Gordon está listo. Muris Island. Where is that? That's right, that's right. Muros Island. M U R. Oh, shut up. No, 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 no. Young Rod. Somewhere off the coast of South America. Yes, South America. Right. Are you sure about the gun? The gun? Certain. Mulcahy says it's identical with those used in the revolt. Revolt. Even to the maker's name being chiseled off. Good. Then we're getting warm. We're getting warm. We think we're on a trail here, too. A trail here, too. Keep up the good work, Bino. 
and take care of the kid. Hello, Jeff. Did you hear about the cricket final? 38 pounds, 10. Douglas was lying down. Are we stopping? Mm-hmm. Hmm? hmm? Uh -huh. Squalid little place. But quite important for military reasons. Controls the upcountry. Oh. Are we on a military expedition? I didn't mean to suggest that. Ah, uh, Douglas. You don't have to be cautious with me. You know that. And after all, we, uh, we are on a military expedition, aren't we? Nice little hand. <laughs> Nosey, we're slowing down. I think we must be coming to... Lynn is getting altogether too thick with that fellow Loveland. Oh, is she? I, I hadn't noticed. Take a good look. You know, Douglas, you're such a natural as a soldier. You must have had awfully good reasons for giving up the service. I did. Oh. <laughs> Come on! Hello! Come on! Hello! Did you gentlemen order a butter or scotch? Goodbye. 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 My good friend Donald Mouse. Fine type. You know, you are a good sort. <laughs> Mr. Fernoy is asking for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, Douglas, you're coming right back to me now, aren't you? <laughs> yes, of course I will. Ah, uh, hurry now. <laughs> well, then, I must say you're marvellous. Really? Why? Got Loveland all in a lather, haven't you? Uh, well, that was the idea. Well, I don't like it. Oh, really? Why, Jeff? Because I asked you to keep out of this. This is a serious mission. Well, I appreciate your interest and all that. It is very kind of you to have got us invited on this trip. But for the rest, I wish you'd let us go it alone. Oh, so that's how it is with us, huh? Yes, that's the way it is with us. And besides, Loveland's no friend of ours. He's in the enemy camp. Now, just a moment. Am I by any chance being called a traitor? Oh, I didn't say that. Well, you implied it. And you might just as well have said it as to imply it. You know, really, Jeffrey, you're awfully stupid. Oh, so I'm stupid, Yes, right? you certainly are. Well, how do you explain your snuggling up to him? Was that part of your act, too? Explain to you? I'd rather eat ground glass first. I have my own reason for what well, I you do. Got your yes, own I have my own you reason. I'm not right. sure I'll that. I don't stand and deliver to anybody. Do you understand? Well, yeah, all the same, you did everything but kiss him. And I don't see why you stopped at that. Well, supposing I did. Now, listen to me, young man. Nobody tells me what I can't do or where I can't go. And as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Jeffrey Lee, you can go jump in the lake. River! Oh, I'll admit that wasn't very good. But the next time I see you, and I hope I never do, I'll have thought of something better. <laughs> if they have discovered the guns, I am ruined. Hello, what's up? Well, he has a message that suggests a leak. I paid you dearly for those guns, senores. One million gold pesos, the gift of poor people, the world. You'll find them all there. The last stuff was delivered yesterday. If there should be treachery, it will be from your men. I can trust mine. So General Torres has an interest in this little place, huh? Well, why is Mr. Furnoy going with him? Oh, take a look at the town, I expect. Oh, really? Oh, I think I'd like to do that. Douglas, let's go. No, no, really. Uh, Furnoy doesn't want anyone else to go ashore. Well, why? Well, um, these little places can be dangerous. Uh, oh. Bandits, you know. Bandits? Oh, how exciting! Now, I know I want to go. Come on, Douglas. No, really, I, uh, you know, I've got to obey. Obey? Yeah. For whom? Well, I mean, I, I mean, you can't. No, I must forbid it. Forbid? Oh, Douglas, that was your biggest mistake. Stand aside. I'm on my way.
Torres. Hmm? I don't like the feel of this place. It's, it's suspiciously quiet. Senor, it is I who give the command here. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give the command. I'm going back to the yacht. You're afraid to go to the warehouse? No, oh, no, let fools be heroes. It's their business. Mine is selling arms. You go to the warehouse, take a good look around. You'll find everything in order. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I like that. Douglas buy me that, huh? There's General Torres. Oh, I'll bet where the general is there's excitement. Come on, Douglas, let's go. Willful little thing, aren't you? <laughs> Fenoy will give us beans for this, but I can't let you go alone. No, no, I'll say you can. Come on. Atención. Capitán, el inventario está completo, mi general. ¿Y los hombres? Los hombres 30 y aquí escondidos. Los demás salen esta noche. Ah. Mi general. ¿Eh? Mire, mire. Ah, bonito. <risa> Qué lindo. Señor, you have no. It's quite right. all right, General. Miss Cherrington is a friend. Oh. Forgive me, Senorita. I did not know you were a friend. Behold my so beautiful stars. For these I shall liberate my unfortunate people. They shall be happy once more in liberty. Please come. Please, senorita, let me give you a little of these old, old... I see you again, amigo. A charming moment, my friend. Oh, delightful, mi general. It is a pleasure to introduce my friends. Senorita Sherrington of New York, Capitan Loveland of London, my distinguished compatriot, General Adolfo, Arturios, Gregario, Sebastian. Ah, senorita. What a moment I have. Thank you. Capitan? I extend my most gracious welcome to our small city. <laughs> there will be a little celebration tonight in honor of our dear friend, General Torres. If the so beautiful senorita and Capitan will honor us. Oh, I'd love to. Do you think we can, Douglas? Well, I'm not quite sure, Lynn. I shall hope. And now, with your pardon, I have important business with our friend, General Torres. If you will be so good, my friend. Oh, with pleasure, amigo. Forgive me for a moment. Of course. Goodbye. General? Oh, I think he's junk. We'd better get out of here. Why? I don't like it. Oh, Douglas, don't be silly. It may be interesting. Besides, I want to stay and see the fun. Fun? Uh huh. Well, you would come ashore. my friend, to liberty? With all my heart, to liberty.
Forgive me, my friend, but you know I do not smoke. But my friend, people are watching. Hmm. You are very thoughtful. Gracias. Douglas, they're not going to... Christos! Fuego! It's all a surprise to me. It's the men who sell them ammunition and encourage that thing to want to be shot. Not those poor little devils. Then, Miss. Jeffrey, oh, I'm going to get you done with them. Yes, I'm all right. Say, you're way up there out of this, will you, mister? Come along, Lynn. we better get back to the boat. Say, say, Governor, you remember me from Morris Island? I never saw you before in my life. Well, I've been looking at your blinking face every day for a week. They're going to shoot me, Governor. Help me, lady, will you? Help me, they're going to shoot me. Douglas, you can't let him do that. It isn't wise to interfere. Oh, come on, vamanos, come on. 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 Oh, all the stupid asinine things to do. Well, don't worry, Lynn. He's got a plan. He's getting information. Information? Why, they'll stand him up against a wall and shoot him. Jeffrey! Oh, they don't want to do that to him. He's a British subject. He's been to Washington. Now, you listen to me, Chris. You haven't seen what I have tonight. Don't kill anybody, Miss Town. Anybody! Oh, Inglesa! Inglesa! El Yate! El Yate! Baco! Baco! Dos ingleses. Oye, tú del sombrero. A ver, ¿cómo te llamas? Tú, grandote, ¿cómo te llamas? Vale. You were employed by these munitions people, is that right? That's right. Say, mister, the firing squad will be here any minute. And they don't bother about court-martials in this town. 
My friends are at work. They'll get us out. Yeah, or else they look lively. They're the soon shooters. Look at you. Uh, sooner. What about Muras Island? Uh, that's where they keep the stuff, Governor. And they've got enough stuff there to blow up the old world, if you ask me. And you delivered the guns here to Torres and his rebels? Uh, yes. And to the government, too. Atlas Arms were shooting on both sides in this little dust-up. Atlas Arms? What was that? El más grande primero. We'll be next, Governor. Don't get a wind up, old chap. My friends will manage somehow. Well, they better shake a leg if they want to meet us this side of heaven. I'm afraid you're right. Aquí, los dos ingleses. They're coming for us now. Jeff! Lynn! Oh, Jeff, I was so worried. Oh, Lynn. I, I've got a release order for you. Douglas Lovin got it. Let's get out of here. Mi Capitan, abra la cuarta fego. Si, senorita. Abra! Con muchísimo gusto, senorita. Thank you, lady. Yeah. Jeffrey, I'm so glad you're all right. Lynn, darling, I'm sorry about those suspicions. They were just plain jealousy. Jeff. And darling, apart from the fact that I'd like to box your ears, I'm afraid I'm hopelessly in love with you. Oh, Jeff, I'm not a fussy man, but I thought you didn't like him. Well, I... I'm not quite sure that I do. You see, Nosey... Well, Lynn and I... Uh, well, I... Look here, it's an old story. I mean, I... Well, I... You mean you and Lynn are... Uh, yes. <laughs> well, you don't love me? Oh, yes, Chris, I do love you. Only Jeff saw me first. It took a firing squad to make me realize it. Oh, you'll be all right, Chris. Remember, there's Joan and Elizabeth and that little telephone operator in the Buenos Aires Hotel. And Bernice and Penelope. Uh -huh. Oh, there are thousands of beautiful creatures all panting for me, but I don't think I'll find one quite like you, Lynn. Thanks. Good luck, old man. Well, what about that cockney? Listen, marvelous, Nosey. It's a concern called Atlas Arms behind the whole thing, and their distributing point is Muras Island. Muras Island? Hey! Don't find me! Muir Island, and the whole thing links up, and I think I've got the evidence to prove it. Do you remember Bino said that the name, the maker's name was chiseled off that gun in India? Yes. Well, this one I got off a dead soldier down there, and look, the name's gone off that, too. Oh, even I get that. That means Atlas Arms in both places. Yeah. And Loveland in both places. I think we've got the last nail in that chap's coffin. Where is he? Oh, he's in the street. He's getting rather nervous. Let's go and get him. <laughs> We'd better get aboard. Flanoy's extremely annoyed over the disturbance you've made. Listen, Loveland, I don't usually go about hitting people on the chin, but this time I have a reason that might interest you. Let's go inside and have a beer and talk it over. No, we can't keep Flanoy waiting. Oh, please, Douglas. I, I'm thirsty. My old bell from Moorish Island. Get away, Blast you. Oh, now, how can I be in your way when I'm invisible? What you can't see, can't hinder. You come with me. You better come. Uh, entertain the lady, will you, mate? Sit down. This is all very mock heroic, gentlemen. May I ask the point? Well, the first point is this. Her name's not Gordon, it's Lee. Interesting as fact, but hardly significant. You'll find it significant. Our father's name was Colonel Loring Lee. You knew him, I believe. 
Very well. He was my commanding officer in India. Quite, and you were a witness at his trial. Reluctantly, I admit. All the same, he was convicted on your perjured evidence. I'm not going to stay here and be insulted. Speaking of mock heroics, sit down. Is there anything familiar about that gun? No. Well, the barman in India left one behind exactly like it when he skipped. It wasn't clever of you, Loveland, to let that cop me down. He told me the whole story in jail, while you, no doubt, were hoping we'd both be shot. I confess it would have saved me this rather boring interview. Don't smile like that. It annoys me. You're going to tell us now exactly what happened in India. And if I don't? Why then, Loveland, I promise you on my word of honor that I'll shoot you right now. Just a stray bullet from the revolution. I forged the order. That's all. Go on. There isn't any more. I didn't kill your father. Then you do know that he was killed. Well, we want the name of the man who killed him. I'm probably signing my own death warrant. But since you insist, it was... A shot came from that window. But it's dead. The thing to do now is to get out of here immediately. Come, Come on, then. Jeffrey! Jeffrey, you, you can't. Jeffrey, you can't. Yes, poor fellow. Very evidently, a stray bullet from the revolution finished him off. Come in. Yeah, so you'll make all the arrangements, eh? Good. Well, I'm pulling out of here at once. I, I don't want to risk my other guests. I've just been talking over the wireless telephone to the British consul. He's making all the arrangements about poor Loveland. Peculiar chap in some ways, Loveland, but always a delightful guest. Won't you sit down and have a drink? No, thanks. We want to talk to you, Fernoy. First of all, you ought to know who we are. Oh, well, that's not necessary. I do a lot of business through the British Embassy in Washington. In that case, you must have heard of our father, Colonel Loring Lee. Yes, I think I have. I've read something of him recently. We came here to have a showdown with Loveland. He was the chief witness against our father in India. And tonight we got the evidence we wanted. He confessed that he had been bribed to forge the order on which our father was court-martialed and convicted. Bribed? Who bribed him? A munitions concern called Atlas Arms. Atlas Arms? Never heard of them. Won't you boys sit down and have a drink? And Loveland wasn't killed by a stray bullet. He was murdered. Well, great Scott, this all seems very mysterious. It is. Loveland was just about to disclose the name of the official of Atlas Arms who killed our father when the shot was fired. Obviously, somebody did not want us to hear that name. Well, it certainly looks that way. Fernoy, we were wondering if it could be anybody on this boat. It seems to us that Loveland constantly took orders from you. By the Lord Harry, I believe you chaps think I'm in this. <laughs> Why don't you take that gun out of your pocket? You know, I've been accused of a lot of things in my time, but never murder. You chaps are so serious. I tell you what I'll do. You can look me up in Bradstreet. <laughs> Wait, you've been in America. Have you never heard of standard rubber? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, that's me. <laughs> of course, I don't pay much attention to it nowadays. But while I was developing it, I was forced to travel a great deal, looking for rubber. It gave me a sort of a passion for knocking about the world with adventure and excitement. You know, knocking about the world in odd places and collecting curious people. I knew a chap called Trubshaw. Wasn't yes, it? well, now, uh, take, uh, take, for instance, Loveland and Torres. I looked them up, too. Loveland, I found, was an army officer who'd retired with a bit of money. And Torres, well, Torres was obviously an old bandit, turned revolutionary and all that sort of thing. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Torres suggested this cruise. And I thought it would be fun. Now, with Loveland gone, what I'm really interested in, uh, pardon me, is this. Softer hands for housewives. It's good. <laughs> as well as bigger and better teeth for dogs and babies. So you see, if you're trying to tie me up with your late friend, well, you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Now, if you boys will pardon me, 
I think I'll turn in. And I think you should, too. Well, may I keep this one? That's if you like. And that, too. Oh, thank you. Oh, look. Good night. We didn't do that very well, did we? You blasted idiot. Which one of those mugs is in love with Lynn Charrington? Both, I should say. Oh, good. Ask Miss Charrington to step in, will you? Good evening. Good evening, Miss Charrington. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you, I am. Sorry you've gotten all this mess. Won't you sit down? Thank you. After all, it was my first revolution. I don't care to see another, thanks. Well, you know men will fight. Yes. War's a pretty old institution. Pretty horrible one, too, isn't it? Yes, it's terrible about Loveland. Oh, I managed to get your father on the wireless telephone. Finally located him in uh, Alexandria, in Egypt. Oh, really? I, I thought he was in, in London. No, I, I felt that he'd naturally want to know what was going on here, particularly about Loveland. My father? But why? Well, as president of the Atlas Arms, he'd naturally feel concerned. President of Atlas Arms. Yes. Oh, I, I thought you knew. Why, uh, why, no, I didn't know. I, uh, I wonder if I may have a cigarette. Yes, surely. Thank you. As a matter of fact, that's how I first met Loveland. He had a letter of introduction from your father, whom he'd worked for some time before in India. Oh, and by the way, I, uh, I didn't make any mention at all of your being aboard ship. I was afraid it might worry your father. Yes. Oh, yes, it might. Good night, and thank you. Good night, my dear. Probably find Miss Charrington at the hotel. I think she went ashore early to get a good night's rest. Well, goodbye, Mr. Fenoy. Very happy to be aboard. Well, happy to have had you. And I'm, I'm terribly sorry about last night. Oh, goodbye, sir. Happy to be on board, and thank you very much. Well, I enjoyed having you, too. Thanks. And by the way, here's one of my latest little gadgets. All for you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye, boys. Bye. Part, sir. Opera says, please stand by for a call from India. India? Yes, sir. Right. Gracias, senor. Nosy! Ready, Nosy. India's calling. Really, I wish you'd knock before you do this type of thing. How did you know who was... Oh, India. Hello? Ready here for the call. India again? You know, I can't understand why Lynn didn't wait for us this morning. Typical of the breed, women don't give it a thought. I suppose she's feeling pretty ill. No wonder after last night, poor kid. Yes. Should we phone her? Let's. I know the minute she hears my voice, her rooms will be bathed in brilliant sunlight and birds will probably twitter from her ceiling. Get her on the phone for me, will you? Hello? Hello? Operator, put me through to Miss Chennington, will you? She's gone. She's gone. Hello, this is Gordon Herk... Uh, Herkimer Herk Gordon. ...calling. Didn't you leave a message for me? But she must have left a forwarding address. Thanks. Gone? Bag and baggage without a word. But no note on the dressing table? I can't understand it. Hello? It's Wyatt. We've got on to something, Bosun. That barman's gun was manufactured by a company called Atlas Arms. Atlas Arms. We located the president of Atlas Arms in Alexandria, Egypt. All the number one boys of the munitions racket are there. Now look here. Take the first boat and meet us there. What? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what was that name again, quick? 
His name is Martin Sherrington. That's right, Sherrington. Now what's the matter? Ling's father's president of Atlas Arms. What? I certainly don't like the look of this. What do you mean? Lynn arrived at Lee Hall the day that Drake was shot, right? Then she arrived out here before you did, and I met her with Loveland. It all looks most peculiar to me. Don't be an ass. Lynn's just an impulsive girl who reads too many detective stories. I hope you're right. I am. Lynn tried to help us, didn't she? She arranged for us to go on this trip with Loveland. Don't you realize that might all have been a very neat trick? I wonder. It's utterly impossible, but what do we do now? We pack for Alexandria at once. Oh. Can he have the chapter the on the Is it a fandy? Inshallah, we talk about the with the His Highness agrees to the terms and would pay partly in gold and partly in silver. Okay. Now you tell your friend the shipment can be made secretly. Mr. Fernoy, who's in charge of all operations, will be here in a couple of days and settle the details. Uh, the kid's here. Landed at Imperial Airways a few minutes ago. What? Here in Alexandria? How the dickens did she track me? Well, tell her I'm busy. <laughs> you tell her. Mm. Well, all right, shoot her in. You gentlemen will wait in this room, please. I won't be a minute. Uh, shoot him like him. Shoot him like him. OK. Hello, Dad. Hello, Len. What are you doing in Egypt? I came to have a little talk with you. Well, well, what's up? Engaged, married, or broke? <laughs> How's about a dollar to pay? No, thanks. I'm not very fond of you at the moment. Well, well, what have I done now? Dad, is it true that you're president of Atlas Arms? Where did you get track of that? Now, don't go answering a question with a question. Are you president of Atlas Arms? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Well, it's not generally known. But then I mixed up in a dozen companies. Why pick on Atlas? Oh, nothing. That just makes you a murderer, that's all. Here, 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 watch this. I've just come back from South America where I've seen men, women, and kids killed with guns that you made and sold. It was terrible. People were shot down the street without a chance. Huh. What do you think war is like, a marshmallow roast? Oh, don't be flippant. It was horrible. You came halfway around the world to tell me that? Listen, Lynn, I know that war is agony, filth, and horror. It's mass stupidity and collective insanity. You know all that, and still you go on selling arms? Well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. Besides, you know, you're pretty expensive with your globe-trotting ideas. Right now, I hate every penny you ever spend on me. Oh, you do, eh? OK. I'm making a note to have your allowance stopped. Can't you be serious for two seconds? I'm more in earnest than I've ever been in my whole life, and you treat me as though I was still in rompers. Are you really serious? Yes, of course I am. All right. War is all you say it is and more. But I'm not responsible if fools want to cut each other's throats. My factories turn out guns, among other things. Now, if men want to buy them and make hell on earth, they might just as well buy them from me. But if they ever see reason, I'd be delighted to shut down my plans. Now you know where I stand. Dad, you're talking about men as if they weren't even people. I've seen them die, slaughtered like animals. It's your fault for messing around such places. Well, I don't suppose it makes any difference to you either, the fact that you've cost me the love and the respect of the one man in the world I cared anything about. I never heard of him either, so I can't be responsible. All right. But get this clear. From now on, I'm on the other side. I'm fighting you. Great. I love a good stiff fight. You'll get it. In that case, I'll increase your allowance. You'll need a war chest. You can take your war chest and go to the devil. <laughs> Spunky kid, eh? That's the way I like him. Send in those snake charmers again. I say, there they are. Nosy Bosses! <laughs> How'd it go on your head? Come on. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Whiskers. A moustache. A beard. It comes off. But you have one of the bosses that he like this. I say, Rosie, come on, get out of here. find each other again. I wasn't even sure that you'd come, but I watched every steamer. And Jeff, remember there was something I had to explain to you? Well, I wasn't quite clear about it until I got here, but now I am. I think you we're both I... quite clear. Why, Jeffrey, what's the matter? Well, that sounds like a queer kind of question. Queer question? But why? What have I done? When your father's president of Atlas Arms... Oh, well, I want to be the first to tell you that and explain, Jeffrey, that Really, I, I don't think explanations are possible. Oh, but, Jeffrey, surely you can't just... Please, Lynn. My brothers are waiting for me. Uh, Jeffrey. The guns are identical. The maker's name's been chiseled off them both in the same way. We had an acid test made of ours, and the name Atlas Arms came out just as plain as day. So at last we're getting somewhere. I'm afraid we're not. What do you mean, Lena? Well, you see, Loveland is dead. We have his confession, but that's only hearsay evidence. And the rest is purely circumstantial. No court would accept it for a moment. Do you mean we haven't accomplished anything? What about Cherrington? He's the man we've got to see. Just try. Dear fellow, it's easier to get an interview with a king. Cherrington's guarded on all sides. We couldn't even get past his third secretary. Ever I wanted to poke anyone in the nose. No, I'm afraid as far as seeing Cherrington is concerned, that's a very difficult assignment. Well, in that case, you'll need me. Lynn. Lynn. Oh, oh, Lynn, we were just talking about you. Uh, how oh, that's you hardly necessary. I'm Lynn Charrington. How do you do? How do you do? And uh, how do you how do? How do you do? And believe it or not, you do need me. Uh, oh. Lynn, we're, we're very busy. Very yes, busy yes, indeed. Yes, yes, I know. I'm still messing in your affairs and you don't like it. Well, all the fun's gone out of it for me, too. But I'm going to stay and finish what I started. Oh, we'd be grateful for any help, Miss Chellington. May I take oh, your yes. lap? Thank you. Don't tell me I've met one member of this family who really has brains. Oh, well, all right. Or perhaps two members, oh, huh? Oh, thank you. <laughs> of course, those idiots over there think I can't be trusted. No. But I do hope you'll believe me. <laughs> <laughs> please, Lynn. You Look, Lynn, if you could... And besides, I've had about enough of this please, Lynn stuff. Do you think I've met every steamer just to flatter your vanity? I was afraid my father would get away before you arrived, if you ever did. And when you did arrive, you wouldn't even listen to me. Now, would you like to see my father? Oh, would we? I say you are a trump. We'd Thank be you. very grateful, Miss Cherrington. Oh, yes. I knew I should have waited till I met the rest of the family before I made my choice. You, you know, it's a very good thing that you came, uh, Dino. Yes? Because those two mutts would never have gotten any place. No. And it's a very good thing that you came, too, uh, Snazzle. Uh, Snickle Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we go? Thank you. <laughs> uh, you two can tag along if you like, uh, Nosy and uh, Stinky. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Stinky. Thank you. Oh, Hi, Mike. Hello. No. No. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Uh, Dad, I want you to meet some friends of mine. Mr. Wyatt, Rodney, Christopher, and Jeffrey Lee. Oh, yes. Always glad to meet friends of Lynn's. How do you do? Uh, now, Dad, I want you to listen to me. I'm sorry, I... Lynn. I've got to attend the meeting. Some other time, honey. Hello, what's this? Am I being kidnapped? I'm sorry, sir, but this is a matter of life and death to us. We've been trying to see you for days, and I'm afraid you must listen. Oh, well, serious as all that, I suppose I can spare you five minutes. Well, go ahead, Lynn. You've evidently got a speech on your chest. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when we were in England? I went to a certain house where a British officer and his sons had led happy and honorable lives. I went out there happily, too, but I found a tragic thing had happened. A little while before, that officer had been disgraced and broken in India. He'd come back home to prove to his sons that he wasn't guilty. 
But before he could show them his evidence, he was murdered and all of his papers were stolen. That officer was Colonel Loring Lee and these are his four sons. Are you sure he was murdered? Definitely. A few days later, another officer who had come from India to help Colonel Lee clear his name was also murdered. Now, someone was afraid, Dad, of what they knew. That's true, sir. I see. But what on earth makes you think that I was in on this? Well, because Atlas Arms is responsible for everything that's occurred, and you are Atlas Arms. So you think I'm the man, and you're ready to throw me to the wolves, eh? Lynn, you must have a pretty big stake in this. I have, Dad. I'm in love with Jeffrey Lee. But uh, he's not in love with me now, though he was for a little while. Mr. Furnoy spoiled all that. You see, he told me you were president of Atlas Arms and... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lynn, did Furnoy know that these boys were Colonel Lee's sons? Yes, he did. Oh, I'm beginning to see daylight. Gentlemen, I hold the controlling shares in many companies, including Atlas, but I don't control this policy. I want you to believe I didn't know that that policy included murder. Oh, Dad, can you prove that? Oh, yes, if necessary. I make plowshares, locomotives, and tractors, and even safety razors. My stock in Atlas will be sold at once, I promise you. But you must know who does control the policy of Atlas. And you've got to tell us, sir. Oh, no, Sonny, I haven't. Oh, Dad, you do. May I suggest, sir, that if you protect him, you make yourself an accessory to those murders? Well, I guess a man in my position could legally wriggle out of that. But I don't hold with murder, and the man who's responsible knows that I don't. That's why he's kept me in the dark. Guess you boys want him pretty badly, don't you? Naturally, sir. Well, then you'll have to hustle. He's sailing on his yacht tonight for Singapore. His name is Fornoy. Fornoy? But I thought he made... Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Uh, thanks, Dan. Jeffrey! Jeffrey! Jeffrey, wait a minute! I'm going with you! No, then you can't come, too. Oh, you, you can't, can't come, in. This is a job oh, for men no, and guns. Oh. Oh. Don't forget to touch second. Lynn, can you ever forgive me? Oh, of course, Jeffrey. Only not in a rush like this. Not till there's time for a thorough reconciliation. <laughs> and darling, be careful. There she is out there. The big white one. No dinghy. Haven't had a swim for it. Yes, but now quietly. Quiet. Let's go. No flat dives. No, no noises. Captain, get up ahead of steam. We're going to sneak out of here tonight. No, sneak out. Not Singapore. Morris Highland. Are you comfortable, Captain? Come on. What's this? These are some of the guest cabins here. Look at that. Take it easy. That's Fanoy's cabin. The secret. Some more scotch and soda. Snow White. Shh, shh. Donald Moose. G Goose. Wait a minute. Oh, 
Yes, sir. Good heavens. Captain. Captain. Good evening, Mr. Fanoi. This is my brother, Wyatt Lee. He's head of our family now, since you murdered our father. This is my brother, Rodney Lee. We've come to clear our father's name. We want a full confession from you. Confession? What? Well, stay where you are. I've got a bullet here for each of you. Oh. And as for Loveland, well, he was done away with by friends of mine in the government. And that's all. That's a true confession. Now, all that's required is your signature, Mr. Fenoy. Sign it. Fenoy, you murdered my father. Right. Nothing would give me greater pleasure than the right. boy. Your father's? Yes. His Majesty said he was proud and happy that an honorable name had been restored. I'm proud too. 